Looking for the best shortwave radio? In this video, we've done an extensive review of the top shortwave radios, and we rated them according to features, audio clarity, ease of use, and value for money. Price information and all radios mentioned in the video are available in the description. So let's get started. Number 5. Sanjian ATS 909X2 Sleek looks, great audio, a beautiful display, and excellent performance over shortwave make Sanjian ATS 909X2 a great pick in this category. It has a premium feel and is expensive, however, the Construction quality and features make up for the cost, though it still feels a bit steep. One of the biggest selling points of this radio has less to do with its job as a receiver and is more about aesthetics. It is positively good looking and has that sleek touch and feel about it that makes it desirable. The speaker and display are laid out very nicely, as are the controls and buttons. The curves seem to be in all the right places and all the features and functions are easily accessible. As for the buttons, the tactile feel and feedback are pretty good. They're all placed and spaced nicely, so there's not much room for error. Its audio quality quality is good, loud, and remains well balanced on all bands. The audio output is generally pleasing and amongst the best in this category. Sanjian ATS 909X2 has a big display that has room for a lot of information. It's bright, feels clutter-free, and shows the information in a very convenient and clear setting. Most competitors for this receiver can't hold a candle to this display. The radio works on several bands, including LW, MW, SW, FM, and Air Band. It has full shortwave coverage and provides remarkable performance on this band. The signal reception is clear and tuning options work flawlessly. The included portable reel antenna is easy to use and helps with the signal quality on the shortwave band. Even SSB, single sideband, works very well with this radio. Previous versions of this radio, including the Sanjian ATS 909X, struggled with SSB. The problem appears to have been solved with the ATS 909X2. It offers 1,674 station presets with three individual memory banks. That covers most popular offerings. However, if you want to explore more, there's always the option to enter the frequency of choice or use manual tuning. The horizontal dial for tuning is an interesting touch here. We're pretty much conditioned to expect a knob style option for tuning. The step button in the middle is useful too and adds to the functioning of the device. It reminds me a bit of the iPod click wheel, but of course, these are very different things. In my opinion, the dial works well and can be operated with a finger. However, preferences are bound to be subjective and many people might prefer the classic knob style tuning controls. Overall, Sanjian ATS 909X2 is a well-made and very capable SW radio with great features, although I do wish it was a bit cheaper. To sum up what we like is the attractive aesthetics. It works on FM, SW, MW, LW airband. Multiple tuning options, three memory banks, excellent audio quality, and a large and crisp display. On the downside, it's expensive, can have volume drop on SSB, and overly smooth volume knob feels unusual. Before moving to the next radio, it would really help us continue making more videos if you support us by just hitting the like button and subscribe, or even with a comment so that we know if you like it or if there's something we can do to improve next time. So let's move to the next radio. Number 4. Kaito Voyager Pro KA600 Kaito brings a good range of features to the Pro KA600. The most notable aspect is that this radio has gone digital, even though many of Kaito's popular offerings like the KA500 and KA340 take the analog route. However, it's not all about digital tech, and it has several features to make its mark. A small circular display towards the top right shows useful information, including the temperature and humidity. Both these are important metrics, whether you're outdoors or indoors. A large display takes center stage on this radio, providing information on radio frequency, mode, battery status, and related information. The buttons to control the radio find their place below the display. Tuning and volume control knobs are placed on the right side of the radio. Being mindful of its emergency radio duties, the Voyager Pro K600 is NOAA certified. It can tune into NOAA weather channels and receives emergency alerts and RDS. Additionally, it can receive conventional AM, FM, and shortwave frequencies as well. Shortwave frequencies are very useful for remote or rural regions, and while this radio works with shortwave, you need to buy an additional antenna for best results. Also, the auxiliary input jack placed at the radio's back enables it to work with external audio devices. There are multiple ways to power the Kaito Voyager Pro KA600. First of all, it has a built-in 600 mAh NIM battery, which charges through a micro USB connector. You can power it through an adapter, power bank, or a computer. Other methods to power the radio include moving the crank or drawing solar power through the photovoltaic cells at its top. Overall, Kaito Voyager's Pro KA600 is a fairly decent emergency radio and offers excellent features and functions. To sum up, what we like is the good range of features including temperature and humidity measurement. It's a NOAA certified emergency radio, good build quality, and there are multiple ways to power the radio. On the downside, it can't work with AA batteries. Number 3. XH Data D328 Best Budget Shortwave Radio When you want a budget radio that will work with shortwave XH Data,
Data D328 is a great choice. It's a decent radio for shortwave reception and works well with AM and FM as well. The radio can work as an MP3 player as well. Insert a micro SD card and it will play the music on the card. The manual actually calls for a TF card, but for broader use, they're the same as a micro SD card. XH Data D328 has a fairly basic appearance. It's a radio design we've all seen, and one that's been around for decades. A speaker covers half the front portion of the radio, while a frequency chart and indicator covers the other side. This block shows the frequencies for FM, AM, and SW bands. There are two dials at the side of the radio. The upper dial is to scan frequencies for tuning and the lower dials for volume. This is all very analogish and very similar to retro radios. Moving the tuning dial also moves the indicator for frequency on the front. This way, users know what band of frequency they're on and can pick the desired frequency. There seems to be a slight mismatch between the dial and the frequency readings, but it's workable. Things are easier on the shortwave front. D328 breaks shortwave into nine bands, making it easier to pick the frequency you want. A sliding band band switch control on the front of the radio makes it easier to tune into the band and frequency you prefer. In a way, this features what makes it a useful shortwave radio. According to the radio's documentation, the accepted frequencies are 64 to 108 MHz for FM, 520 to 1620 kHz for AM, and 4750 to 22000 kHz for shortwave. In theory, that is an impressive range. Practically, it bodes well to keep in mind that this is a cheap radio. It works best with strong signals, which is especially relevant for shortwave. The lack of tuning and dedicated noise filters means that some signals won't be intelligible or even end up getting skipped. There is a telescoping antenna on its top, but it doesn't make a huge difference. Adding DSP, digital signal processing, into the radio is an attempt to make the signals better and reduce noise. It works fairly well and adds to the value of the radio. This is a rather interesting use of digital technology on a radio that's largely on the analog side of things. Power comes from a rechargeable lithium-ion BL5C battery, though it can work with direct DC input as well. The radio package includes a USB cable for direct power input. In my opinion, employing a USB is a better choice than working with an adapter. Overall, the D328 is a good pick when you want a cheap radio receiver with shortwave capabilities. It works well while staying within a good price. To sum up what we like is the attractive pricing, easy controls for MP3 players, uses a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, and can work a USB power input even when charging. On the downside, audio quality can be below average, lack of tuning fine-tuning options, and the receiver can feel overly sensitive. Number 2. Eden Elite 750 – Best Premium Shortwave Radio Eden Elite 750 hits the spot for a premium setup thanks to its build, features, quality, and yes, pricing. There can be some questions about its value, but the radio is good at its job. This radio is a proven and popular design. While we look at the Eaton Elite 750, it's worth noting that this radio is the same as Texan S2000 and Grundig 750. Between these models, the difference usually comes down to the brand labels stuck at the top left of the radio. Also, irrespective of the branding, the radio is manufactured by Texan. The first thing to notice about this radio is its appearance and build. The design is attractive, feeling somewhat muscular even in the block shape. It looks laying the foundation for the premium fill and pricing. Thankfully, the build quality follows through and makes this a dependable radio for those who want a quality shortwave reception. While the Eaton Elite 750 is a remarkable SW radio, it works on several bands including LW, Long Wave, SW, Short Wave, MW, Medium Wave, FM, and Airband. It also works with SSB, further adding to available features. The capability of this radio receiver to work well for SSB and SW are highlights for me, though it isn't a slacker for other bands either. Managing controls and frequencies is easy. Users can enter the desired frequency directly using the keypad buttons on the face of the radio, or go about it the old-fashioned way and move the dial to get to the frequency you want. It's a fun way to discover new SW channels, and there's a lot going on in this band. Interestingly, though the radio covers a wide range of frequencies and bands, it doesn't leave gaps and covers the full band. Elite 750 manages a decent reception even when working solely with its telescoping antenna and rotating antenna. I like the rotating antenna. It has a nice touch when moved and is aesthetically pleasing. If you want more out of this radio, hook it up to a quality external antenna. The radio's side has room for accepting antenna connections, including long wire antennas. Add an antenna tuner for better signal and significantly jump in signal quality. Power flows through D batteries and it is very efficient for a radio with this size and features. It sits battery and you can expect it to last a very long time. There's also room for a 6 volt DC input at its side. To sum up what we like is the excellent build quality, overall aesthetics and design. Works well on SW, also offers MW, LW, SSB and Airband. Good performance with built-in antennas, rotator and telescopic, efficient use of battery, and good sound quality and clarity. On the downside, it can be tough to justify the price. The wide band can feel too wide, 30 kilohertz, and no Bluetooth. Number one, Texan PL880, our choice. The Texan PL880 is our pick for the best shortwave radio. It's almost identical to its past two models, the PL660 and the PL600. 
It has a broadband filtering array, and it's a sensitive and selective radio capable of receiving AM, FM, longwave, and shortwave broadcasts. The buttons are highly responsive, and the entire control panel has a smooth response. It has an external jack, a headphone jack, a line-out jack, a three-position antenna gain switch, and a 5-volt DC input jack on the left side. The right side holds the central tuning knob, volume control, the fine tuning knob, a tone controller switch, and a backlight switch. It also has a 24-hour alarm clock, a sleep timer adjustable between 0 and 120 minutes, and a snooze button. This radio has one of the best sound qualities compared to other radios on the market. High frequencies are crisp and clear, low frequencies are audible, and the mid-range is exceptionally clear. FM stereo is available through the headphone jack, although it doesn't have the bass that some larger models have. This hardly makes any difference, though, to the listening experience. The radio is powered by one single 18650 Li-Ion rechargeable battery with built-in charger. With heavy use on the backlight on, the factory supplied 2000 MHz battery lasts about 15 days. When it does discharge, you can recharge it in the radio, or swap it out with another inexpensive battery. Tuning for all bands is easily accomplished with separate main tuning and fine tuning knobs. This is a great arrangement, far better than the auto switch tuning speed of a PL660. In addition to the many features listed in the manual, there are many more hidden features like the USB-LSB synchronous detector, dynamic noise reduction, muting threshold, changing line output level, calibration of single sideband, antenna source, firmware version display and date, uptime, and wall charger. This is an everyday radio and it may have functionality that blows other radios of its class out of the water, but it's nonetheless in that class, not a perfect radio. But perfect enough for shortwave listening fanatics and imperfect enough to make reception reporting worthwhile. It's well worth the money and it's highly rated by Amazon buyers. So what do you think? Which of these is the best shortwave radio for you? Or do you think another radio is better? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.